Yo, what up, what up, what up, friends? I welcome you to the mind of the professor. Let's kick this bad boy off, shall we? So, first things first, huge, huge news in the sporting world. Obviously, you know that's where I got my start from. You see me on the bottom line, sports every Tuesday, 8 p.m., shameless plug. Uh, and you see me on a lot of other uh, sports shows. Uh, so, I, I do like and uh, I do love talking sports. And so we're going to touch on this first subject, which is this huge NCAA lawsuit that has been going on within, obviously, you know, the 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 courts uh, for a few years now. Um, it can obviously extend back to the O'Bannon case, uh, where Ed O'Bannon, formerly of the UCLA Bruins, uh, filed a lawsuit in terms of trying to help players be able to use their name, image, and likeness, also known as NIL these days, colloquially, uh, to be able to make money while they are in college. So there has been a a bunch of lawsuits going on in the past 10 years that have been trying to fight for the student athlete. And we'll get a little bit deeper into that today and what amateurism actually and truly means when it comes to the NCAA, and when it comes to the student-athlete. So, uh, it was just a few days ago, uh, May 23rd, but it officially became a historic day in college sports history. The NCAA and their power conferences agreed to a settlement in the House versus NCAA case brought to the courts by a former Arizona State University swimmer uh, by the name of Grant House. The settlement includes $2.7 billion to be paid in back pay by the NCAA and also the Power Five conferences and universities. This will be paid out over a 10-year period. And also those student athletes from 2016 that claim that they were hindered by the you know, restriction of being able to make money off of their own brand. Uh, they will also get back pay. So huge win for the student athletes. Honestly, something that should have been done a long, long time ago. The NCAA has prided themselves and unashamedly they've prided themselves, but also uh, unbastardly because to be completely honest, the NCAA has screwed the student athlete out of money for a long, long time under the guise of amateurism. Amateurism is not a thing, y'all. I'm sorry. This goes back to the early 1900s. There's no point in going into all the different stories of how this came about, but certain practices were put back in place in the 19-teens that said that student athletes, due to whatever, you know, the, 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 uh, the amount of benefits that they receive as a student going to get a degree on a scholarship or other things that the NCA has claimed along the road, all of these things have been used in their case against amateurism or sorry, for amateurism against the student athlete. They wanted to keep them restricted so that they would not be able to make money off of their name, image, and likeness. And this continued y'all for over a hundred years. The fact that students have been considered, or student athletes, excuse me, have been considered strictly students just because they receive a scholarship, some free meals, maybe some perks here and there has always been a sham. Always. And so finally, the student athlete has got their day in court and proved that they deserve to be able to make money off of their own personal brand. We are talking about people that own their own brand. We are talking about athletes that go to school. They build up their own social media. They have their own friends. They have their own. They have built everything themselves for the NCAA to not only leverage, but just manipulate and use the student athletes has been a horrible indication of the NCAA's practices over the past hundred years. And finally, it's been brought to roost and thank God for that. We now see 
that these student athletes will be able to make money off of, again, their name, image, likeness, whatever they can do. We live in a capitalist society, whether you agree with that or not. It is what it is. We live in a society where the almighty dollar is what runs everything. Again, whether you agree with that or not, I don't like it, but it is what it is. So if that's the fact, then we need to allow people to make money any way that they can. Now, obviously, there is an extent to that, right? As long as you're not harming anyone else, right? I'm not talking about hitmen or people trying to kill people. Obviously, that's a little overboard, right? But if you're not harming people and you're trying to make money and you're doing things the legal way, you should be able to make money as much as possible. And this, and, and frankly, and the NCAA has been restricting the student athlete for a long, long time. So finally, we're seeing them get the appropriate compensation and recompense that they deserve from 100 years of the student athlete being uh, restricted, oppressed. So all the conferences has agreed. It's a little weird. They're going to have to work all the details out because the lower conferences are kind of worried that they are not going to have enough money. Schools will even be required to start paying into this back pay $20 million a year is what they're quoting as the school's having to do. So if your school doesn't have a big football program or basketball program, which is where most of this money has come from and is going to go, let's be completely honest, um, your school may pay a little more money than they should be having to, depending on. So there's a lot of details that still need to be worked out. Do not be too concerned. But if you are a D1 student athlete since 2016, uh, I would file and go get your money ASAP. You know what I mean? Um, so this is a huge story. And this comes on the heels of the Dartmouth men's basketball team a couple months ago voted in favor of forming a union. This has never been heard before in actually being accepted. The Northwestern uh, football team did this a few years ago, but it was denied. Dartmouth was able to do it because they are a private university. So whereas Northwestern was public and they were unable to do this as a private university, Dartmouth students were allowed to make this happen. Now, how far does this actually go? It's under review of the National Labor's Relation Board, the NLRB. But it needs to go somewhere because if you're not, now going to start paying student athletes, which they totally deserve to be paid, then they need a union to protect them. If there's going to be collective bargaining agreements, if there's going to be things that are happening into the future where students need to have a say, they need to be protected. They need to have lawyers. They need to vote on council. Who's going to be the vice president? Who's going to be the president? And that's tricky when it comes to NCAA because you have student athletes, college athletes that are graduating every four years or so around there, depending how long they go to school for. So now you're going to have to transition that to new people coming in every few years. It's not like the NBA or the NFL where you can have someone stay on the uh, on the uh, players um, the players board for 15 years like a LeBron James has. Right. So what's the big picture here? Well, the big picture is that the NCAA is finally coming to roost. The NCAA as an organization has been corrupt, corrupt to the bone, okay? They have completely and utterly screwed everyone out of nothing but making more money for themselves. And finally, they are being brought to task. Honestly, I wish they had to pay a lot more back. I really do. Because they've screwed student athletes for a long ass time now. So what's next? Well, there's a few things that they're going to have to look into. Obviously, students are able to make money off their NIL now, right? We could see a settlement that students maybe even get some of this TV revenue. All these media rights deals going around, the NBA talking about close to $6 billion on their new media rights deals. Like, come on now, break off a piece to the little man. You know what I mean? Break off a piece to the little man. So employment status is still unresolved. Does that union come about? How are student athletes now classified as employees? The revenue share. How is that going to come into play? As I mentioned earlier, smaller schools that don't make that much money off of college football or college basketball are going to be like, why should we have to pay this? 
So again, things still need to be figured out. But the fact that we are finally bringing the NCAA to task for what they have done wrong to these student athletes is a blessing for them. And I, for one, support it to the fullest. So, if you are a student athlete, again, since 2016 and you played, they're only doing Division I. I apologize to you, Division II, Division Three athletes. I know you worked hard. I appreciate your effort. Uh, but it's only for Division I. Please go claim that money. Go get part of that. Those are billions of dollars just waiting. Um, and not to mention, if you if you look even deeper into these things, which came about in my research um, for Storyline Sports, shout out Detroit Mel from IOW on our new show we're working on. Uh, but we did a lot of research into this, and it goes a lot deeper. Private equity is now coming into college sports, y'all. FSU, for instance, Florida State University has been talking to Redbird Capital and Weatherford Capital and Sixth Street equity giants for private equity investments. And this is going to be coming to all of your schools. So if you thought free agency uh, and the transfer portal and all that was really what it, I mean, it is. And we live in a capitalist society again, and they deserve to make their money. So by all means, please go get your money. Now, Will this cause issues? We got to look at both sides of it, y'all. We got to look at both sides. Yes, the athletes are now making their money. The athletes, the advocates are finally getting a voice for themselves. But this doesn't resolve everything. It doesn't. Right? Yes, athletes deserve to be compensated for, uh, come on now, the bullshit argument that the NCAA has always used of amateurism that included getting a scholarship and getting a degree and this. And first of all, as we know nowadays, degrees are not everything that they're made out to be. Now, yes, there are some, as I was talking to someone the other day, there are some professions that you have to have a degree in. And I don't want to deal with you if you don't have a degree. I want to know that you went to school for a long time. But the world doesn't necessarily work like that. For instance, look at my profession, digital marketing, social media, Mark, you need a degree for that. Yeah, I have a degree in that, but you don't have it. You don't need a degree for that, you know? So again, I am so happy that they are able to get their money, but there's still so many things for them to figure out. The NCAA, again, from the other side, they're going to try to challenge this. Up, down, left, right, back, forward. The Notre Dame president, John Jenkins, already came out and said this. Listen, listen to this, what he said. The settlement, although undesirable, is necessary that we save the great institution of college sports. Quote, to save the great institution, Congress must pass legislation that preempts the current patchwork of state laws and establish that our athletes are not employees, but students seeking degrees and provide protection from further lawsuits. That comes from the Notre Dame president, John Jenkins. So there's still going to be a lot of, uh, obviously, people who are opposed to this side of things. But as always, I will keep you informed here on the Mind of the Professor and other shows as to what goes far with this. But that's that's huge, y'all. That is huge. We've been waiting for this for 100 years for athletes to get paid. And now finally they get their just due. And (laughs) bravo. Bravo and cheers, my friend. All right. Moving on, moving on, moving on to our next subject. This is a fun one for me, y'all. CIA agent John Holmston came out previously and said that the CIA used, um, and excuse me, oh, you know what, you know what, hold on. Before we go there, my apologies, uh, let me, um, I see some comments coming in, so in case there's some questions, I want to make sure that I answer. Shout out Daniel Barry. We see you on the bottom line. Shout out Flo. I'm not going to show all your comments. I love you, but uh, just trying to get to the questions, that's all. Um, yes, athletes do make money for big time institutions. You're right. But how much money are these institutions getting? 
How much money is being invested into these institutions? Why do they feel like they can't give back to the athlete that's making the money for those institutions, right? Okay. Um, unions being outdated. Look, man, you can say that, but unions still serve a purpose in this world or they wouldn't be had in most industries. The union is to fight for the little man. And that's the only point of that. And if you don't understand that, you're not a little man. And that's okay. Not everybody was raised uh, or even grew up in a poor environment or in a not having environment. Um, so, you know, uh, yeah, I appreciate you. Appreciate you. Thank you. Hot take, Jake. I appreciate it. All right.